G'day, Jim Harnwell here from Fishing World magazine. All of us anglers know how great it is to go out and catch a feed of fresh fish, but do all of us know how to look after the fish uh, to maximise their eating qualities and also to look after the fish welfare? What we're doing today is presenting a video on how to look after our fish. Uh, as fishermen, we obviously uh, respect and care for fish. We want to make sure that we look after them properly, and by looking after them properly, it actually maximises their eating value which, uh, if you're after a feed of fresh fish, is a really important thing. Now what we're going to do is we've got Fishing World's Marine Biology Editor, Dr. Ben Diggles. Now Ben's been with the magazine for 15, 17 years. Uh, he's trained in a lot of fish management techniques and he specialises in fish health. Now what he's going to do is actually show us how to kill the fish humanely and then look after the fish in the best way possible so that when you take it home and cook it, it's going to taste really, really good. So the technique Ben's going to show us is called Ikijimi. It's a Japanese technique that instantly uh, kills the fish uh, so it doesn't suffer or feel anything. And then after that, we're going to use an ice slurry to make sure that the fish is perfect. So when you get it home, cook it up, put it on your plate, you're going to get the best possible meal. Okay, what have we got here? We've got a little bonito, a little bonnie. And the first thing to do, there's a few ways to humanely kill fish. The first thing to do, I think, for safety is to get the lure out so we don't tell the safety of the fishermen. And there's two, two main ways to kill fish humanely. The first way is to uh, just knock them on the head with a donger. Uh, but this, uh, for, and that's very useful for large fish, dangerous fish to fishermen, like wahoo and mackerel. But for small fish like this bonnie, um, ikijimi is, is another way. And what we're doing here is we're looking for the brain. The brain in this, these fish is in the midline. Uh, it's usually in line with this line there on the operculum. And we can go straight in through the top here. And what you'll see is the fish flares and then goes limp like that. Next thing to do is to bleed it and get it down into a nice slurry as quick as you can. Because what this does is uh, bleeding the fish removes the blood, which is a source of, uh, source of nutrients for bacterial growth. So you want to get that blood out as quick as you can. And secondly, you want to reduce the, the, uh, the temperature of the fish down to around between zero and four degrees. You want to do that as fast as possible. And the best way to do that is with a nice slurry. Now to make a nice slurry, uh, usually you want minimum two parts ice to one part uh, of the water where you've caught the fish from. And here, what we've already got, uh, a bucket full of water, and uh, we've got two bags of ice. So each one of these bags of ice, four kilo bag of ice, is equivalent to about, about 10 litres of water. So we've got one bag of ice in there. And what we do with the bleed, the fish, best way to do it for these is cut through the, uh, down the back there in the isthmus and let it bleed out in the ice, straight into the ice. Now, one of the obstacles I think that people have had in the past regarding use of the ikijimi is the fact that the brain of the fish, I mean, fish have got pretty small brains. And so if you don't know exactly where the brain is, and, and that varies for different species of fish, that's been an obstacle for people not knowing where the brain is. So what we've actually done uh, in conjunction with the Australian Animal Welfare Strategy is go out and look at a whole range of popular fish species that Aussie wreck fishers catch. And we've gone and looked and x-rayed the fish and found out exactly where the brains are. We've developed three pamphlets and a website where you can go now and you've got that information available. And this set will be available in the September 2012 edition of Fishing World magazine. So keep an eye out for it. Cost is not a barrier to be able to, uh, to use this technique because you can use things just like this uh, Phillips head screwdriver. You might want to sharpen it, but it's got a good handle and it's a solid shaft there. You need obviously need something sharp to, to pith the fish in the ikijimi method, and that's a really good tool. If you haven't got a Phillips head, you can just use a flat blade and uh, as you see here, just sharpen the end. Again, very good tool, nice comfortable handle and uh, zero cost. Most people have got those things lying around at home. Knives are another uh, useful tool. If you get a knife with a reasonably sharp point, uh, it can be useful. Uh, but to, today on the market, you can get some uh, purpose-built tools. Like this is actually an Ikijimi spike. The most good tackle stores nowadays, you can actually buy an Ikijimi spike. A very good tool to use, uh, purpose-built. 
And then you've got these other tools uh, that these are, for example, used in aquaculture in various places around the world. So that gives you some idea of the sort of tools uh, that you can use for this technique. And here we have a brim. Uh, it's another species we have in the Ikijimi pamphlet and also on the website at ikijimi.com. Now these brim uh, fish this shape, better to lay them on the side. The pamphlet shows to go through uh, here and with the brain, just pith the fish like that. It's immediately dead. And then you can go uh, bleed and put him on ice. Guys, Ben's been showing you how to ikijimi fin fish, but you can actually also do it with other marine species like squid. Uh, some Japanese uh, eggy specialists showed me how to do this. They actually ma manufacture this little tool, which is a specialist squid, squid ikijimi tool. Uh, the process is basically the same, and, and uh, the reasons why you do it are pretty much the same. Obviously, if you're going to eat a squid, and they're fantastic uh, tucker, you want to make sure that it's going to be uh, in the best possible condition. So if you ikijima it, it dies instantly, you can put it on ice and then you know it's going to be fantastic when you take it home. So the basic pr process is pretty much the same. Um, the squid central nervous system is in the back of its head here. So you position your ikijimi tool, push down, the squid goes white, sort of stiffens and he's now dead. I'll put him in the, um, the ice uh, slurry and that squid will be in perfect condition when I get back to the ramp. I'm going to clean him, take him home, cook him up and eat him. Now here we are back at the ramp at the end of a good day's fishing and this is where that little bit of extra effort pays off with your, uh, your humane killing and your ikijimi. So here we have one of our, our little bonito that we caught earlier and what I'm just going to do is take uh, fill it off and we'll just see whether we can spot any difference in there compared to say a fish where you've just haven't bled it and just let it thrash around the bottom of the boat. So we'll start to we'll cut up the top, down the side here. And what we're looking for is just, you've bled the fish, so we're, we're not getting any blood coming out in, in the fillet. And the fillet's a nice colour. Because the fish has been killed very quickly, there's a, um, you haven't got to build up a lactic acid or other metabolites in there. And because of that, you've got uh, very little uh, problem with the, with the flesh going off. It lasts a lot longer uh, if you're storing it because the, the pH of the flesh is much higher and it's just a much better taste. As you can see uh, here with the Bonito, a little bit of blood in the middle, but generally well, well bled and uh, looks very tasty. Mm -hmm.